I'm Pastor George Borkard, and this is another Higher Things video short. Woke Wednesday takes on shame. 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 <laughs> like, subscribe, ring the bell, get the app, donate. Higher Things is a youth organization all about passing the faith to the next generation. If you love what we're doing, donate today. Link is in the description. We, the, our youth, need this gospel today more than ever. Give today. Wednesdays, even with COVID, the last day of quarantine, uh, bring us uh, Erica Jacoby. She is the executive director of Higher Things, the face that runs the place in HT. Erica, how you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Well, you're welcome. Good to see you. Hey, um, uh, what is shaming? Can you give yeah. some examples of how it's used nowadays? Dude, can you ask me one question at a time? At a time. <laughs> I mean, I can only take one at a time. That 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 was me question shaming you. Anyway, um, yeah, there's a what is shaming? Let's start with that one, okay? There is a pattern emerging here, I think, as we have our woke conversations every Wednesday, and that is that language is not a static thing. The original meaning of words can kind of change and evolve. And so we're kind of pointing out here in our conversations that, and hopefully learning something about the culture, um, that that's what's going on with language. Uh, and since we're living in the age of the internet, um, these new uses and variations on language uh, spread at internet you know, lightning speed. Uh, at any rate, um, let's let's talk with, about the noun shame. So shame is dictionary.com defines as the painful feeling arising from the consciousness of something dishonorable, improper, ridiculous, et cetera, done by oneself or by another. Um, now, the verb when we use shaming as the verb is um, to cause to feel shame or to make ashamed or to publicly humiliate. Uh, for being or doing something specific. So in the context here, because you don't, you didn't know what shaming meant um, in the woke culture, I'm now ignorant shaming you. See what I did there? So, um, I mean, I could also COVID shame you because you've been in quarantine, right? That would be another way of doing that. Um, so as you can see, uh, and nowadays, how it's being used, there's some humorous applications. Like, for example, you can see on the internet, I don't know if you've seen this or not or done this before, but like people making their dog wear a sign of something naughty they did. That's dog shaming. Like, I break into the pantry and hide potatoes around the house. Um, another funny example would be uh, people baby shame. They shame their baby, like putting a sign on the baby that says, I fart like an old man, right? So those are some kind of humor, humorous examples of um, using the word shame. Um, but shame in, in its original sense is uh, like the word hate is a very powerful word um, that's used to point out bad and hurtful behavior. Um, and one of the more, maybe a more serious example of the word shaming would be slut shaming, for example. And that's the idea of shaming or attacking a woman or a girl for being sexual having one or more sexual partners, acknowledging sexual feelings, or and or acting on sexual feelings. Um, and that term slut shaming has been um, kind of powerfully used a lot of times, um, for instance, to rebut um, Republican statements and policies that um, folks feel uh, trivialize rape and reproductive rights, right? So that's one way of using that term. Um, there's another, another example that's, uh, out there quite a bit is body shaming, which is a bad thing too. And the you body shaming would be like fat shaming, for example, uh, making someone feel bad about how they look or how their body looks, weight shaming, skinny shaming. Um, and that would call attention, uh, to, to sort of our culture and how it's unfortunately that basically no matter how a woman looks, um, somebody has a problem with it. So calling attention to that is um, more a more powerful way of sort of using that word. So um, the broad uses of shaming nowadays um, are kind of in some ways stretching the word to sort of the point of being silly sometimes. Um, and sometimes it's being used to um, sort of excuse bad behavior as well. 
Um, so, so if it's pointing out maybe a misogynist jerk or bad parents, right? Um, like, for example, there's such a thing as child shaming. I forgot to mention this one, too, where there's an incident of um, a kid who was not very nice at school. Their parents put a sign on them and put it on the Internet that says, I'm a bully. You know, um, so that's another example of, you know, like child shaming. So um, is it emotional abuse? Is it a growing sense of is it a growing genre of humor? It kind of depends on how it's being used out there. Um, so it's kind of an interesting term that sort of evolved with its meaning. So um, I'm now going to ask you, Pastor Borghardt, this is my favorite part where I get to make you talk. Uh, in the Christian context, what do we do with our shame? Um, and shaming of others. Could you kind of put this in a law and gospel context for us? Our shame, and then when we shame others. Well, I guess the question, the question is whether, if you're going to law and gospel this, it's, it's, it's um, what happens with your shame? Mm -hmm. And then that will encourage you on what to do about other people's shame. So all of our shame was taken on by the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Um, he, uh, took, scorned the shame of the cross for us. Cursed is anyone who hangs on a tree pretty much in the ancient world to hang on a tree, to hang on a cross is, is pretty much right up there with the worst of shaming. And so, um, he has taken on our sin and our shame and by it, his death, we have life. So if you sort of push others down in order to propel yourself forward, you should expect God to push you down and shame you on the last day. If you are merciful and kind and forgiving, you should expect God to be the same on the last day. Do unto others as you, so shame others as you'd like to be shamed. Um, <laughs> I think, I think uh, another thing is a sort of um, so much of this shaming creates, I, this is a second question that you're not prepared for. Um, it sort of creates a, a, a defense that if I'm doing yeah. something that you don't like um, and you call me out on it, I can always run back to the don't shame me, which makes it equivalent right. to don't judge me. Correct? Right. Right. And, and, don't and call for, me out on my behavior. Right. And so again, that's not the most helpful thing in the world because um, that is a means in which we justify our behavior. Either all of our, our shame was taken by Jesus, and which means it sort of calls us out of the shame into a life that's spent forgiven, or we have to carry the shame around and justify it. Um, again, that is a movement between law and gospel. Um, yeah. Pretty much the word shame in, this, in the New Testament has to do with all the icky that we do and all the, the sort of uh, fallen on our faceness. The... Um, the not measuring up before God and before others and the shameful things that we do that there's simply no defense of. Right. Um, and now it seems like we revel in our shame. Um, we push it as shame and then, and use that as a defense to not be called out. We're doing that well, now. We're that we make it, we make it our neighbor's problem, not right. your problem. Right. 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 Yeah. We, we can do that all over. Uh, look at me. I don't uh, shame others. Look at me. I'm better than others. Thank God I don't have the problem that um, I'm going to short shame you. Short people have. <gasps> you so, went there. Um, I'm, and I'm simply using as an example. I'm, I'm by no means or way, shape or form <laughs> picking on your height. So, again, it's it's does Jesus take on our sins upon himself and therefore our shame as well? If he does, then he calls us out of that, not to live in our shame anymore, and certainly not to, to, to sort of rub our shame in the face of others. But he also calls us out of shaming others yeah. for whatever sin that there is or whatever shame they may have. Um, if he's forgiven our shame, <gasps> then we can forgive others. Hey, buddy, come here. All Are you right. going to dog shame you for barking during so our... Just Final Sounds thoughts, good. Erica. Any final thoughts? Well, it, um, it occurs to me that um, my shame as a Christian, as a baptized child of God, is no longer my shame. It's on the cross. Um, 
And so I think um, I think focusing on Jesus, not on myself, is going to be the best way to go here um, to sort of escape that shame. Um, and when I'm doing that, I think I'm less likely to sort of shame my neighbor. I'm going to defend him, speak well of him, explain his actions in the kindest way. Um, yeah, that's the escape from shame. Well, okay. I think Thor is bringing this thing to a close because he thinks that somebody's at the door. And so he's barking like a crazy dog. Erica Jacoby, the executive director of Higher Things, the former uh, public school, high school teacher who is our woke expert. Thank you, Erica. Thanks for having me. He bore our sins on the tree so that we would stand before God now totally and completely forgiven. By his stripes, by his shame, we are forgiven. Um, think about that the next time you want to judge others. And also think about that the next time you want to use your shame as a defense mechanism. Don't shame me. Don't shame me. He's taken it on. We no longer have to live in it anymore. And we certainly don't have to point others' shame out either. I'm Pastor George Borkart. Last one from the bunker, and this has been another Higher Things video short. <laughs>